Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I'm Joshua, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, and really anything else that I think is groovy. I hope that you'll enjoy tonight's offerings, content for the blood god. <coughs> I mean, on with the show. Tonight, I have the Boiled One Phenomena. You know me in analog horror, like, uh, you know, I, I, I like me some analog horror. Um, and it's mostly because it's somebody's personal lore. And um, I'm a lore whore. I'm, I love good lore. Uh, you know, especially if, like, it sucks me in. Um, like, Channel 58. What the fuck, guys? What the fuck? I want some new Channel 58. I always have to check in with them just to make sure there's no new content. Um, but uh, it, it Channel 58 is probably one of those things that, uh, like... When they come back, they break the internet a little bit, uh, and uh, I hope that I hope they do come back. I really miss Channel Fifty Eight. But uh, tonight's subject is, of course, the Boiled One phenomena, and I've never uh, heard of this one before. It came across my feed, and um, um, such is how I find most things uh, on YouTube, uh, as most regular people do. Um, and um, yes, um, let's check it. Out, actually. This might, this might have come out of, uh, from uh, come off of the research page. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know. Doesn't matter now. Um, but um, yeah, let's check it out. Um, this is the boiled one phenomenon by Doctor Nowhere. Hi, hi. All following media has been curated with permission from personnel at Efrata 228. Great care has been taken to keep the identities of persons involved anonymous as they requested. Warning. This video contains elements which are known to cause mild to severe cognitohazardous conditions, including for properties that may mentally and physically affect the viewer. Please refer to the following procedures in order to guarantee your safest possible viewing experience. Make sure that you have the following in the vicinity. Earplugs, a pencil, a sheet of paper, a standard Christian Bible, open to Psalms 91. If something unusual begins speaking in tongues, tangible to the naked ears, insert your earplugs and turn to your pencil and paper. Write the following on the page. I can see this paper. I can see my hand. I can't hear the screaming of thousands. I can't hear the feast. I am a moving, breathing, human being on planet Earth. No evil shall befall you, and no plague shall come near you or near your dwelling. After these words are written, recite Psalms 91.10 aloud. If memories and imagery of something unholy persist in your mind, pray. It is all you can do. <clears throat> in the event 
equipment you are required to carry out these procedures. Contact authorities immediately afterwards. You will be administered amnestics. Many appear to lead a normal life afterwards. That was creepy. Tree of Heaven. In the late 1990s, a now classified documentary based television program would debut from a local station in Pennsylvania. The program revolved around woodland plants and animals and was primarily directed towards children. The star of the show and narrator would talk about the wonders of nature, the dangers of it, how to appreciate it, and most importantly, how to protect yourself from it. Unfortunately, in early 2001, the program would be taken off the air due to the host passing away. Then something odd happened. On August 13th, 2003, the 13th episode of the series began a rerun seemingly out of nowhere. The following audio recording depicts... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus. I'm trying to absorb things here. The following audio recording depicts the beginning segments of the episode. Ooh. Video footage taken from episodes 3, 6, 8, 10, and 13 of the program, courtesy of the Afrata branch, all rights reserved. Good morning, bushwhackers. Today we're venturing into the heart of the forest to find a plant that's as beautiful as it is deceptive, poison oak. We all know about it, and here in Pennsylvania, it's not as common, but still something to look out for. And here on we aim to uncover all the wonderful secrets that nature has to offer, no matter how minuscule or gigantic. So let's get going, shall we? Yes, please. Found primarily in deep North American woodlands, poison oak has many different names and places of origin, also referred to as the Tree of Heaven. Can you imagine that? In China and Taiwan, one of these invasive species made its way to America in the 1700s and took its ground here boldly. As many of us know, it's infamous. Fuck poison oak. During one of the interlude segments, an anomalous broadcast would hijack the program. This broadcast depicted videos of a red, melted face that spoke to the viewer in a warm, yet deeply disconcerting voice. Shit, what was that? I always, ah. This face and its properties will be hereby referred to as PHEN 228. FEN 228. Okay. It's very, uh, very much in the vein of SCP, down to the use of amnest amnestics and everything. As Fen228 spoke, clips of footage and even live camera feed monitoring hospitals and bedrooms would be occasionally overlaid on the screen, obscuring Fen228's face.
Though most remembered Fen228 speaking English, multiple non-English speaking viewers remembered understanding every word that was spoken. The following clip is a restored recording of the anomalous broadcast. The duration of the clip has been shortened and the audio has been muffled, reversed, and dampened. These alterations are absolutely necessary to suppress its hazardous attributes as effectively as possible. For maximum safety, watch with blue light glasses and insert your earplugs. you imagine this motherfucker? The broadcast will be hereby referred to as Broadcast 813. <clears throat> broadcast 813 was viewed by roughly 530 residents throughout the, south, the southern Pennsylvania area, and upon viewing, left many severely distraught. Aside from the discomfort and paranoia Fen 228's television presence had brought to the viewers, there were other side effects that these viewers experienced that were highly unnatural. Many viewers reported not being able to keep the image of Fen 228's face out of their minds. Some even continued to hear its voice days after viewing. A victim who requested to remain anonymous claimed that the face was living in his brain and feeding on his spine. Another described trumpets playing in their ears before they fell asleep. None of these people knew that this was only the beginning. The beginning of a whole new species of suffering that would never be fully understood. August 14th, 2003, the Great Northeast Blackout of 2003. After the anomalous frequency was detected by television stations, troubleshooters, the NERC was ordered by the Af okay, Efrata branch to have all power grids local to the state of Pennsylvania disabled by 4 p.m to prevent further escalation of the anomaly and the public knowledge of Broadcast 813. The... God. I'm sorry. I'm gonna... Yes. All right. Excuse my uh, interruption. The outage ultimately spread to various parts of New York, New Jersey, Ohio, 
and even Canada as well. Smiley feet, or uh, sad feet. Creating the famous Great Northeast Blackout of 2003. Almost 50 million people were without power, some not getting it back until days later. Uh, bro, I remember being out of power for like almost a, uh, like a week or, or maybe more, a little bit more. That shit was awful. Thank God we had the um, uh, the the boiler was still on uh, and the pilot flame was uh, flame was still going. During the confusion caused by the outage, all traces of broadcast 813 were collected by the Ephrata branch and seemingly wiped from existence. Including news articles in the works from the morning after the broadcast, internet posts, recordings, and more. The cause of the blackout was promptly covered up and claimed to have been a combination of human error and the result of trees falling onto sagging power lines somewhere in Cleveland, Ohio. But the damage had been done. Aftermath. Twelve days after broadcast 813 was blocked from the air, a historically massive influx of pseudocoma LIS occurred throughout the state of Pennsylvania, leaving 509 people affected and many, many families in shock. Pseudocoma is an extremely rare condition in which a patient experiences a, oh dear, uh, cerebromedulospinal disconnection leading them to be conscious but unable to move or communicate verbally due to complete paralysis of all voluntary muscles in the body except for vertical eye movements and blinking. Holy fuck, that sucks. This anomalous outbreak of such a rare condition was regarded as a spectacle by the U.S. Department of Health and was put under governmental investigation immediately. One thing in common with all of these cases is that the patients had been at home watching TV the night of the broad uh, the night the broadcast 813 was aired. Though the victims of this outbreak were unable to speak, they were able to communicate through Morse code by blinking. More than 60 victims were interviewed. <clears throat> Many of these interviews held unavailing results that often led to more questions and many others held results that required archival or termination. However, fairly late into the investigation, the Afrata branch was notified of a particularly odd case revolving around one Job Zamborini, that's a name, uh, Joe, I'm sorry, Job, Job Zamperini, I can read, an elderly victim of the anomalous pseudocoma outbreak. Job Zamperini specifically requested his alias to be used in future records instead of his real name. 
which will remain classified. Zamperini was a war vet and fluent in Morse code, putting him on the mark as a potential interviewee as soon as the outbreak was put under investigation. After a very odd photo was taken in his backyard by his visiting grandson, his family became deeply troubled and convinced his house was haunted. This led them to contact a local priest in hopes that his house would be blessed. The following photo depicts Fen228 standing next to the small playhouse in Zamperini's backyard. The photo itself has proven to be non-hazardous and safe to view, though still anomalous in nature. For most comfortable viewing experience, uh, wear blue light glasses of view from a distance or view from a distance of three feet or more. Zamperini claimed something horrible and unholy was with him and would hurt him and possibly others if he described it and what it was telling him. The following is a recovered, previously archived, recording in which Officer T. Gomez of the Afrata branch interviews Job Zamperini. Hello, Mr. I'm Officer Gomez. I hope you're doing well today. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions regarding your condition and possibly um, the unholiness within your home that your family had mentioned? Translations. Okay, first and uh, foremost, did you notice any onset symptoms before you lost complete mobility of your body? Face, huh? Face. Hmm. When did you begin seeing this face? Interesting. After I saw it on TV and never. Any of the people me. who have seen the broadcast that you saw on August the 13th described having vivid and upsetting hallucinations. Do you think this is something your brain has created? No, Can it is in the window. Describe this face to me. Her horribly burnt hmm. knot of Lord Christ. I uh, I still don't see it. Have you been having any hallucination aside from the face? I'm sorry to hear that. I hear screaming of many voices. Are these screams constant? At night before sleep. Thank you. You oh, shedding oh. light on this is helping more. Thank you. Oh, here's the trumpets. Are these screams constant? At night before sleep, I hear trumpets, too. Thank you. You shedding light on this is helping more than you know. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There he is. Can you see him? Wonderful day, the miracle of birth, a fetal fanfare. Oh my. Listen closely. Do you hear it? You will hear the laughter of thousands as the sky opens up. You will hear the trumpets play their happy sounds. The strong blood of life will pour down onto us all, together, 
we will be still together a feast of food together melded by love and purest connection be still if you can see this screen it means it is not safe to continue viewing the program will end shortly Protocol Brevita 228 has been initiated. <laughs> Just kidding. Perform the procedures given to you during the introdu introduction portion of this video immediately. Oh my. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. That was pretty creepy. Definitely hard to hear the, the, what he was saying, but I got the gist of it, and it was very creepy. Very, very creepy. Um, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this new one. Uh, I'm going to probably watch this one again later, but that was pretty good and pretty creepy. And again, I like the lore of the whole thing. Um, uh, it, it very much feels in the vein of C, uh, SCP. Uh, and and seems like something that they would want to to to, to contain uh, uh, anyway. Um, so um, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, go on over to Doctor Nowhere. Uh, show him some love. Uh, be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>